Uh, I am Andres Marino in room 7H9 presenting Dr. Calvin Burghardt, um, former national of the Oak Ridge National Laboratory. Thank you. Um, okay, tell me about yourself and why you decided to get a PhD in nuclear engineering. And that's an interesting story, I think. I, I went to Penn State as an undergraduate uh, in, in aerospace engineering. <clears throat> I got very good grades. I was on the honor roll quite a bit. And so when I graduated, I applied to many schools and many disciplines. And it turns out the Oak Creek, or the uh, University of Tennessee in Knoxville, um, I was able to get a what's called an AEC traineeship where they paid me to go to school. And I didn't need to do anything except go to school. Other places I didn't have as good a deal. So basically I became a nuclear engineer because of the, 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 the fact that I was being paid to go to school and I didn't have to borrow a lot of money. Okay, what was the hardest part of your degree? The hardest part was the, the nuclear engineering department at the University of Tennessee Everybody in graduate school there had been an undergraduate in nuclear engineering. So they had had all this neutrons and gamma rays and all this stuff before, and I had none of that. I, I did have thermodynamics, but the fact that I was changing disciplines from aerospace engineering to nuclear was quite a challenge. And the other graduate students really helped me get through school. Otherwise, if I'd really been totally on my own at school like that, it would have been really difficult. Okay. How long did you work at Oak Ridge? Well, let's see, about 1968 probably is when I started on my dissertation, got my PhD, and I was doing the research at Oak Ridge National Lab. In 1969, I got my PhD, and I worked there for maybe three years. Mm -hmm. How does a nuclear power plant work? Oh, that's, that's a pretty involved question. I mean, that's. That's why you get a degree. <laughs> but, but basically, they, the fundamental thing here is that the, the, the nuclear reaction that takes place in a, in a reactor um, generates heat. And that heat then heats up water, which then goes through another loop and makes steam. And the steam then goes through a turbine and makes electricity. So the nuclear part of it is really something like a, a coal-fired plant where it heats water. The nuclear reactor heats water and then it eventually goes through a secondary loop, makes steam, and goes through a turbine, makes electricity, goes through wires, and turns on our lights. Okay. Okay. Um, how much uranium does it take to power a nuclear power plant? Hmm. Uh, that's a good question. I think it, it totally depends on how big a power plant you have. There are, in, in universities, there are power plants that are they're for educational purposes. They're called trigger reactors, and uh, they're very small. They generate very little power. They, don't, they can become critical, which means the neutron population stays constant, but they can be quite small. Um, a big 1,000 megawatt plant, like up at San Onofre, um, takes a lot of fuel elements, a lot of heat exchanging tubes, and is a big thing. It takes a whole lot more uranium. So it really depends on the size of the plant. Mm -hmm. How can nuclear energy be safe? It can be safe by design, sort of like airplanes. You know, one can crash, one can kill a number of people. A nuclear plant could have an explosion like Chernobyl, but that was a design issue in that there was no containment around Chernobyl. It was basically just sitting out there naked. You know, when it blew up, stuff was all over the place. Um, the one in Japan, was located where a Tsami had hit it. That was a, another mistake. So we just need to avoid those kind of mistakes. One statement that I'd heard quite a long time ago was that the reason why we didn't know how to handle the Japanese power plant accident is there haven't been enough accidents to know what could go wrong. We, they had to discover what to do in order to, to make the thing after an accident. They, if Here's one other thing. I, is an observation I've made, and that is that if when the Sierra Club decided that nuclear was a bad thing, because it could have an accident, it's possible to have an accident, um, they killed the nuclear energy business in America, and we built a whole bunch of coal-fired plants, and if we'd gone nuclear back at that point in time instead of coal-fired plants, we wouldn't be where we are today. Salt Lake City just had three record-breaking days in a row. 
It goes back to 1886. Hot, the hottest record for three days in a row. This, these kind of things, just these records keep getting set. The global scientist community says we do have global warming. There are people that are oil companies that don't want to don't want to move on to nuclear. But nuclear energy is safe. There are a number of designs that are even more safe than in the past, and we should be building them pretty quickly.